What's up everybody? The Bearded Prepper coming back to you. I'm excited because not only is it springtime, it's prepping time. Um, I always get excited every spring when things start growing. You get the, the fresh leaves putting out, the birds are singing, you know, fresh, uh, fresh produce starts coming in. Like um, I've got my spinach, my lettuce, my kale coming in. And now strawberries. That is uh, my first batch of dehydrated strawberries. I know it doesn't look like much, but uh, just, what, maybe a third or a quarter of a sandwich bag? But that's actually two quarts of strawberries. Um, my lovely bride is an exceptional cook. Um, she cooks these strawberry cupcakes that are the best thing you've ever put in your mouth. And, uh, you know, with that, we, we go through a lot of strawberries, but all the leftovers are the ones that are starting to get maybe a little bit, a little bit too ripe to work with. I'll cut the bad spots off. I'll dehydrate them. These are, um, these are really great because they'll keep for up to seven or eight years in this shape. Once I vacuum seal them here in a few minutes, and, uh, I usually take the vacuum seal packets and put them in the fridge. And that's the same way with everything. Um, you know, right now I have an excess of kale, an excess of spinach, so I eat what I can. You can freeze it, but if you really want to um, get ahead and use it in your preps, you can dehydrate it. Then plan to use it in soups or, you know, whatever. You can rehydrate it and cook it in your eggs. It's still nutritious, and once you dehydrate your excess produce and you vacuum seal it, store it in the fridge or somewhere out of light, um, or in the freezer, I mean, you'll have have preps that'll last you know six seven eight years personally i've i've rarely been able to um get anything to last that long especially when it comes to dehydrated uh fruit and berries and such as that um my children and i will take that on our backpacking trips or you know like you saw recently um, i traveled into central america for a couple of weeks i'll take that kind of stuff with me because it gives me access to uh, nutritious foods without all the weight. So that's especially important when you're um, carrying everything you're gonna have with you on your back or uh, you know you have limitations with weight that you're uh, gonna be flying with. So I encourage you guys to, to uh, be thinking about that. You know, it's an exciting time. All this produce is starting to come in. If you've planted greens or um, you know, Maybe you have some strawberry plants or access to strawberries because even beyond the the plants that i have just nearby we have a farm stand um, that does nothing but you know sell their produce throughout the year and of course they get an early start and they have strawberries just prolifically making right now and they will for some time so i take advantage of that abundance when i can and put it into my preps I encourage you to do the same thing. As a matter of fact, I'd love to hear what you have going on right now, even beyond strawberries and, you know, greens like kale and spinach, things like that. Um, and if there are any other methods you're using to add those things to your preps, let us all know, put them in the comments. The other great thing is my beautiful chicks have started laying. So uh, those of you that have followed along in the the chicken saga, if you will, where I started my chicks back in the winter time, in the dead of winter, um, was able to protect them and get them through the uh, cold weather and such by building them a safe heated structure out, outdoors in the chicken coop. Um, we're now getting eggs. They started laying while I was um, out of the country in Central America a few weeks ago. So that's a great thing. And you know, while we're, while we're thinking about it, these eggs, this is only, you know, nine eggs for my family that's still here, family of five, nine eggs, you know, would, wouldn't go terribly far, but they're just starting. So these chickens are going to lay more and, uh, I still have about 15 chickens right now. So, I mean, that's probably going to be close to 15 eggs a day. Um, maybe a little bit more than we can use. And if it is this year, I'm going to start water glassing eggs and uh, give that a try. I have seen people dehydrate them before as well. Um, I'm not so sure about that. Um, 
freeze drying would probably preserve them a lot better. But rather than deal with that, I'm going to try to learn how to water glass. Um, and that'll be another episode probably as soon as my production kicks up to the point that I just can't keep up with them. Um, but you know, thinking about things like this, even if you're not going to preserve and add it to your preps, maybe you don't have room. Think about uh, down the road, you know, this, this will be an excellent barter item. And you know, you talk about space. That's one of the, the biggest um, drawbacks in the prepping world. Unless you can just afford to have all of the storage space you want or you're fortunate enough to have a big storage space. Um, I don't. But, you know, space is always premium in my life. And when you talk about putting back, especially food, but even beyond food, you talk about preps like, you know, nails, screws, tools, uh, things like that. If you can't get them, you know, you want to be able to have them at your disposal for when you need them. So, you know, being prepared in those arenas is going to take up a lot of space. So, you know, approaches like this is going to help a lot. I said this was at least two quarts of strawberries. Look at that size. I can hold it in my big grubby paw versus, you know, a couple of quarts like this. So everything that you can take and, and preserve in a manner that's uh, going to save you space, it's a win-win also. So as we progress through the summer, you know, I'll be uh, taking other things as I, I mean, squash is a good example. Uh, for those of you that have grown squash, you know, you put all this love and energy into growing your squash plant. And then all of a sudden there's like squash, 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 squash everywhere. I mean, you're popping out zucchinis and yellow squash faster than you can eat them. Some people freeze them. I freeze some. Uh, some people can them in jars. That's an option as well. Um, but you can also dehydrate those. And I'll be honest with you, if you're going to cook a dehydrated vegetable in say a sauce like uh, we use even squash and such in our pasta sauce um, or if you're going to cook them in a casserole or something like that you're not going to notice the difference between dehydrated and uh, frozen or canned squash it's it's going to reconstitute and be just as nutritious and um, you know you won't know the difference so those are just some tips for you to uh, you know save space and also um, be able to take advantage of abundant swaths here so um let me know what you guys are doing if you have any other ideas about you know preserving food and such sorry for the flickering light there uh as you can hear probably in the background we have a bit of a rainstorm going so anyway um drop some comments let us know what you're doing give us some more ideas let's let's use this network of preppers to share ideas i'd love to to hear what you're doing as far as um, taking the produce you're getting right now or what you do in the springtime to add to your preps. So until next time, I encourage you to be prepared. As always, know your Lord and Savior. God bless. I'm the Bearded Prepper, signing off.